Hey guys, what's up? It's Merc here from Poolshed Games, and this video is just going to be a quick uh, discussion about Drop Zone Commander and kind of a real brief overview of the background fluff for the game. Uh, Drop Zone Commander, as everybody knows. Because it is Drop Zone Commander month here, and within the hour, hopefully, the Lich Lord and I will be getting our first game in of Drop Zone Commander. We'll make a video telling you guys kind of how it went, what we thought, if the rules were easy or hard to pick up or not. So that's something to look forward to. But uh, now just get right into it. The fluff of the game, it's very hard science fiction. There's no magic, there's no psionics, there's no... Not even... I don't know if I would say there's a mutation. There is kind of. Uh, so that's, yeah, sort of. Uh, the game is set in the year 2670. Now, this is after a lot of stuff has already happened. Uh, for a while, humanity grew and expanded, uh, kind of hit a golden age, um, with traveling to the stars and just generally being very prosperous. Uh, during that time, they encountered the Sheltari, which are one of the alien races in Drop Zone Commander. Uh, the Sheltari kind of broken down into tribes, and humanity came to find out that the tribe they were dealing with was really just kind of manipulating them to help them fight a war against another tribe. Uh, so in the, the fluff, the humans have an uneasy uh, truth with some of the Sheltari and... It's full of political intrigue there, but what happens is towards the end of this golden age, a broadcast goes out to, to all of humanity on every planet, every system, telling them, you know, hey, uh, there's a cataclysmic event that's going to happen, um, we can provide you sanctuary, and make ensure your survival, and then give you the means to retaliate after it happens. And the leadership of humanity kind of brushes it off. However, there is a large group of individuals that decide maybe we should listen to this. And that is what brings about the Battle of Vega. Uh, a year goes by after the signal comes, and it's time to to leave for the humans that are going to follow the warning. The authorities put a fleet up to stop them, uh, and there's a big naval battle um, above the planet Vega. Uh, but because the pilgrimage fleet that's leaving is so powerful, uh, well, it's not powerful, it's just so big... Uh, they break through the military blockade and are able to make it to where they were going. Now this severely weakens the the sphere, the human, you know, the core worlds. And not shortly after, the Scourge come. The Scourge are kind of the alien bad guys of the game. Uh, they're very parasitic in nature. They infect hosts to make them into their shock troops and their line infantry, they have a very biomechanical feel to them with their tanks and their drop ships, and they come smashing into the core worlds, and because the humanity's fleet has been weakened from the battle at Vega, it's pushed aside, and the core worlds are lost. Um, so Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus... Pluto, Neptune, they're all gone. They're lost. Um, humanity ends up... The survivors are on the far-out colony worlds. And this is where you get the basis of the United Colonies of Mankind faction. They're the remnants of humanity that... Either were on the, the frontier worlds when the invasion happened, or managed to escape to the frontier world after the invasion happened. They are very militarized. They come across kind of 
like with their gear and their drop ships sort of look like the stuff from the movie Aliens, which I think is really cool. Um, it's kind of like a mix between the movie Aliens and, and like Starship Troopers and just really gritty hard sci-fi for the UCM. And those are, as I said, the humans that manage to either be on the colonies when it happened or, or escape. During this point, as the UCM is rebuilding their military might, they're contacted by the post-human republic. Now, the post-human republic are the people that left, and they've returned, but they're no longer exactly human. They are, like, cybernetically enhanced. Some of them are cyborgs. They're very high-tech, um... For, you know, for a human faction. And they come back and they sort of offer to try to make, a, like, a, not amends, but to uh, smooth over relations with the UCM. The UCM's not having any of it because they blame the traitors at Vega for weakening the human sphere so much that it couldn't repel the Scourge. So there's a very uneasy tension between the two human factions. Those are the four core factions that have come out in the main rulebook, which is uh, the post human Republic, the Scourge, the Sheltari, and the UCM. Now, there is an expansion coming out. I'm not sure if it's next month or when, but it's sometime this summer. It's going to bring in a fifth faction, and the fifth faction is the Resistance. Uh, this is the faction that uh, I'm probably going to end up playing if we get into the game proper. And they are the remnants of Earth's military, Earth and, you know, humanity's military, that were left behind on the Core Worlds and have been fighting this long guerrilla war against the Scourge. Um, so far, no models are released for them, but they've been releasing a lot of renders. And they have very kind of like Mad Max meets almost uh, Command and Conquer look to them. Like they have technicals and they have motorcycle troops, but they also have tanks. And they're the only faction that has a helicopter. They have a big air, like a big hovercraft. So they should be an interesting faction when they come out. Um, all I know is supposedly there's two different branches. There's the branch of the Resistance that uh, openly accept help from the UCM. And there's another branch that kind of feels that they were betrayed and don't want to openly accept help from the UCM. Um, but the game itself takes place at the launch of the UCMs in a military crusade to take back the Core Worlds. Uh, they are launching a massive military expedition to retake Earth. And, of course, the Scourge being their, their main enemy, that's the, the main matchup, and the Sheltari and the PHR have their own reasons for being there. I haven't really read too far into that yet, but that's, that's kind of where the game sets, um, fluff-wise. Like I said, the Merc and I, uh, yeah, the Merc, the Merc and I, I'm going to play myself. No, the Lich Lord and I are going to play a game here a little later. It'll be UCM Starter versus Scourge Starter. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how the game works. We'll let you guys know what we feel about it after we play it. Um, I kind of want to... I'm going to sit down with the book and read through, or at least try to read through each section's uh, fluff, each of the army's fluff, and give you another video kind of tying that all together. And I'm going to look at their stats and the minis and try to give you an idea of what I feel that their play style is, but I can't make any promises because I'm going to be playing UCM pretty much only and the Lich Lord's going to be playing Scourge only. But uh, that's what's coming up. Like I said, hopefully this little quick intro to the fluff was enough to at least maybe get you interested, and uh, we'll see you next time here at Pulsche Games.